bit, everyone. Mr. Octagonal here from Octagonal Gaming. Now, today, uh, we have another Octagonal podcast. So, I believe this is number 11 or 12 at this point. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, today, we're going to be talking about a few things, including uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers struggles, Blair Walsh, and probably something else, which probably Eric Bledsoe of the Pistons. I don't really know at this point. But uh, first, we'll be talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers. They have not had a good start to this season. It's been ugly, and I have not been concerned about them this whole season until yesterday. They just lost to the Hawks. Let me say that again. They just lost to the frickin' Hawks. The Cavs are supposed to be, like, the best team in the East, and the Hawks are supposed to be the worst. But somehow, someway, the Cavs lose to the freaking Hawks. Yeah, they have, what have they lost? Like, at least three of their last four, maybe more. But the Cavs are struggling as a Pistons fan. I mean, I'm loving it. I want to see more. And uh, I know the problem is, it's not LeBron James. He's been great. It's not any of the players. It's actually Tyron Lue. Tyron Lue is a terrible coach. Let me say that again. He is a terrible coach. Let's compare the Cavs and the Celtics for a minute. Let's talk about Jay Crowder and Kyrie Irving. Both players were involved in the Kyrie Irving trade. So, Jay Crowder was a very solid player on the Boston Celtics. And then he was traded to the Cavs and part of the Isaiah Thomas trade. He's a good player. He's debatably a top 50 player in the league. And he was really good in Boston. And in Cleveland, he's struggling. You want to know why? Because Boston has a phenomenal coach in Brad Stevens, who's one of probably the second best coach in the NBA behind Greg Popovich. And Tyron Lewis, like the worst coach in the NBA. And now we have Kyrie Irving, who's been on the cast his whole career before being traded to the Boston Celtics. Now, Tyron Lue's only been on the cast for like a year and a half because they fired David Blatt, which I was surprised about. And uh, what we've seen from Ty- Tyron Lue, I'm still surprised. Not that David Blatt was a stud or anything, but I could. I, okay, I don't know if I could coach better than Tyron Lue, but a lot of people could. Kyrie Irving said, that uh, he was so grateful that he actually has a coach now in Boston that he's never had a good coach in Cleveland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Celtics are winning games. Kyrie Irving is debatably a top 15 player in the league. And a top 15 player in the league should not lead a team to the best record in the conference. Especially without, like, another star with them. With Gordon Hayward hurt. I mean, Jalen Brown's been really good. Jason Tatum's been really good. Al Horford's a solid player, but none of them are stars. But Brad Stevens is doing something right. Brad Stevens, as I said, he's the second best coach in the league. And Greg Popovich won't be here forever. So when Greg Popovich leaves, Brad Stevens will be the best coach in the league. And Brad Stevens has been a good coach for a while. He has experience. Let's look back five years ago. Butler made the finals... Or not the finals, the uh, March, Man- March Madness Championship, I believe, two years in a row. I know they made it at least once. I feel like they made it twice, though. But yeah, Butler, a very small school led by Brad Stevens and this, small- this little-known player by the name of Gordon Hayward. Look where he is now. I mean, he's on the bench hurt, but look where he is now. He's an all-star talent player. But Brad Stevens has led crappy teams to the promised land. Now, if we look at Tyron Lou. He's won an NBA Finals. You can't take that away from him. Or should I say, Coach LeBron won an NBA Finals because it's LeBron and a bunch of scrubs on that team. But the problem with the Cavs is they need to fire their coach. I think when Isaiah Thomas is back, he's not going to look the same as he was in Boston. Not just because of his hip injury, that will be part of it, but also because he doesn't have as good of a coach. So I think Cleveland should fire Tyron Lue, say bye-bye, you're trash, and sign someone good, I don't know, like Mike Brown or something, who coached very well in the playoffs this year for the Warriors. I know the Warriors are a juggernaut, but they didn't lose except for Game 4 of the NBA Finals when the Cavs were against the wall. Their backs were against the wall. So, uh, yeah, Cavs need to fire uh, Tyron Lue immediately. But uh, as a Pistons fan, I kind of hope they don't since he's trash. We're doing really well. I'm loving life right now. I'm going to be talking about the Seattle Seahawks, who somehow, someway... Lost to the Redskins yesterday. The Redskins aren't a bad team, but the Seahawks should have won that game. And uh, who's the culprit of the Seahawks' loss? Uh, his name is Blair Walsh. Now, you guys may know Blair Walsh. He used to play for the Vikings. He was pretty good until... <coughs> choke. 
If you guys don't remember, a few years ago, I think 2016 of a playoffs the year, Denver won the Super Bowl. So I believe 2016 of a playoffs, like January, like the early 2016, like the 2015-16 season, in the wild card round, the Minnesota Vikings were hosting the Seattle Seahawks. And the Vikings were driving down the field, down by like two points. And in my head, I was thinking, the Vikings are going to find a way to screw this up. Blair Walsh missed the, the chip shot field goal. Vikings lost. Yeah. So you'd think the Seahawks would know that Blair Walsh sucks, right? Because it was against the Seahawks. The Seahawks witnessed it firsthand. Well, they signed Blair Walsh, and Blair Walsh missed three field goals yesterday, and is why the Seahawks lost. So thanks, Blair Walsh. Now my pick suck because the Seahawks lost, the Texans lost. Thanks, Blair Walsh. Hopefully my Lions win tonight, but yeah. Not, I'm, I'm so grateful we actually have a good kicker in Matt Prater. But anyway, I would not be concerned if I was a Seahawks fan because it's not like it was really your team's fault. It was just your kicker's fault, and that's an easy mistake you can address. So let's see if the Seahawks can rebound or if the Rams will end up winning that division. Last but not least, we're going to be talking about Eric Bledsoe. There have been plenty of Eric Bledsoe trade rumors for the past few weeks. I don't think he's played a game since. The GM said they were going to trade him, and the GM said that Bledsoe probably played his last game as a son. I wouldn't be so sure of that, because Eric Bledsoe hasn't been traded yet, surprisingly, in my opinion, and recently he returned to the Suns' facility, so it seems like Eric Bledsoe is still going to be in the Suns for a bit, but probably still going to explore trade offers. I think this is good for the Suns, because they don't need to rush it, and maybe he'll have a little more market value. So we're mainly going to talk about teams that could potentially get Eric Bledsoe. The day that there were potential Eric Bledsoe trade rumors, I made like a comment of like five teams you could go to. One was the New York Knicks. I know there have been Bledsoe to the Knicks rumors. I could see a package of like Frank Nittikina of their first round pick and maybe like Kyle O'Quinn or something. I don't think they do Nittikina and Willie Hernan Gomez, but maybe. Another one, which was probably my favorite, was the Milwaukee Bucks. Maybe trading Malcolm Brogdon in the process, which I know Malcolm Brogdon's a good young player, but I think he, he doesn't have as good of a ceiling as Eric Bledsoe, and he fits in the, the Suns' young timeline. Now, the Bucks were trying to, I guess you could say win now, would get a very solid player in Eric Bledsoe. The Clippers could be interesting, but uh, Patrick Beverly's a solid player. Uh, the Nuggets maybe give up on Emmanuel Moutier and probably look to deal Moutier in this trade. He's a young player, maybe throw in a future first-round pick. I know the Nuggets have Jamal Murray, but he's been more of a shooting guard. But uh, one that really intrigues me is the Detroit Pistons. You guys know I'm a huge Pistons fan, and point guard is sort of a need. I'm happy with what I've seen from Reggie Jackson this year. I think he's definitely rebounded from last year, and he looks like to be the same self from the year before in 2015-16. So I think that's, that keeps up. But why I would rather Bledsoe is A, he's cheaper, and B, he's like he's not on as long of a contract. And we do have a bunch of bad contracts. Andre Drummond's on a big contract. Tobias Harris is on a big contract. I do want to hold on to both of them. John Lohr's on a big contract. Oh, gosh. Of course, Reggie Jackson's on a big contract. Avery Bradley's going to get a big payday this offseason. So we are not doing too well contract-wise. And maybe we could look to do this. Eric Bledsoe is a free agent in 2019. And he's only making $12 million per year at the moment. He will ask for a lot of money, which is a bit concerning. But I do think it would be worth it. I could probably see us trading a package of like Reggie Jackson, maybe Luke Kennard because he hasn't really played yet. I don't really want to trade first-round picks and Reggie Jackson, but we'll see. Hopefully, we don't trade Boban, though, or else it's just no. That's the end of the video. hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you think of the Cavs, Seahawks, and Eric Bledsoe in the comments. I'm out. Peace. And also, uh, make sure to give me questions for your Q&A I'm going to do in a few days, and uh, tell me what you think of this new outro.